Welcome to Gossip About Gossip, powered by Hedera Hashgraph. In each episode, we'll cut through the hype of blockchain promises and explore real-world examples of organizations creating the next generation of decentralized applications, which will bring trust back to the internet for us all. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the latest episode of Gossip About Gossip, the podcast where we talk about real-world applications of distributed ledger technology. My name is Zenobia Godstock, and I'm the SVP of Communications here at Swirls Labs, helping to grow the Hedera ecosystem. Today, we decided to have dueling CTOs, sort of like dueling pianos on the podcast. Um, actually, not dueling at all. Uh, I am delighted to be joined by the CTOs of Dovu and Timeless, who are going to talk to us a little bit about how they are working together um, and what they have been up to. So, um, Matt from Dovu and Dan from Timeless, hello. Hi. Howdy. And we are, I believe, <laughs> spanning three continents. So, I appreciate everybody getting on a call morning, noon, and night, literally. Okay, you all are longtime community members. We have a lot of folks who know you, love you, and you know are very invested in what you're doing. But we also have a lot of people who are new to the Hedera ecosystem and have not heard about your projects since we last had you on. Um, so maybe, um, Matt, starting with you, do you want to just give an overview of the project and what you do there? Hi, everyone. And Zenobia, thank you for inviting me on. I really appreciate it. Um, so as was previously mentioned, I'm the CTA for Dovu. And um, we've, we've been growing a lot. Uh, generally, the best way you can think about us is becoming an open protocol for onboarding as much carbon into Hedera as possible. Um, and, you know, every day is um, a different challenge, um, but I'm just glad to be part of this journey. All right. And Dan, how are you? I'm good. I'm tired. It's very early. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, it's one of the dangers of living over here because you're never really on the same time zone as anybody else is in the community. So it's either very late at night or very early in the morning. Um, but look, thanks for having me. It's an idea. Um, I'm Dan. I'm the CTO at Timeless. Um, in short, we've got a DMRV solution. Um, it really allows for accurate reporting of carbon intensity. And um, we're using it for a number of solutions at the moment, such as guarantee of origin. Um, so tracking assets and their carbon intensity and the carbon intensity that goes into creating those assets. Um, and really just using this to kind of create audit ready reports of uh, carbon emissions. So um, yeah, it's it's something that we've been working on for quite a while now where we're ramping up production on quite a lot of things. So um, you know, this integration is really timely for us. Great. And Dan, can you explain a little bit about how and why your customers require this carbon offsetting functionality? Um, well, I'll, I'll take the capitalism route first. And the capitalism route is obviously, if you can prove that an asset is um, is greener than your competitors, uses less carbon in its production, you, you can sell it at a, at a higher rate. So for example, we're working with a customer now who's... Um, trying to create the greenest pig iron as possible in the US. So part of the solution that they have there is to uh, use biochar. So there's quite a lot of insetting from um, biochar for great carbon offsets for it. Um, they also have kind of, uh, they're reusing a lot of the gases, the uh, fuel gases as part of the process, and they're reusing that throughout their entire process. So the time the solution tracks how all of that in setting all the carbon intensity moves around the system and, and essentially what then is emitted as carbon emissions. And what we can do is then we can produce a, a value to say that each ton of pig iron has X number of kilograms of carbon dioxide associated with it. Now, the hope is that once they um, prove, obviously we can help prove out with audit level reporting that this is the carbon intensity of each of those Kilograms, they can then obviously sell that at a higher price because the downstream producers that use that pig iron, you know, the people that are building cars, the people that are making, you know, buildings, can claim that their carbon footprint is lower because the materials they're using have a lower carbon footprint as well. All right. And so, um, and then Matt, can you explain, you know, or I'll open it up to both of you, can you explain a little bit about the integration and you know what it means that you two are now working together yeah so 
I think we've probably been more or less officially working together since the middle of last year um, because um, Dan, um, the, the, the team of timeliness have been working on this incredible solution and they kind of needed something to be kind of this, this integration. And I, I admit I probably pushed it down the curb a fair bit. Um, but <laughs> in, 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 in Key 4 last year, we really put the... Um, we really delivered on what we promised and it came out a lot better than what we wanted. I, I, the whole viewpoint was what if we could have almost like a Stripe like functionality, like you just drop something in and you can have a one click offsetting solution where you can get, um, you know, either webhooks or emails back on the back end to connect users up. And so it's an end to end solution for just, you know, literally just dropping in a little widget. And it's something that we're, I'm really proud that we've developed. And I'm just glad that, you know, Dan and Timeless were the first people to really try it and really um, test it out because they do have the volume to find little obscure bugs we couldn't find on our end. And so, Matt, it's something that you have, you know, it's open to anyone else if they want to integrate as well. Yeah, absolutely. And the really cool thing is, um, I mean, I don't really want to sell this too much because the story should be all about Dan and about what, what, what like, Timeless is and what he needs. But it's all about trying to align the, the projects from Dovu to the goals of the business. Um, so we can work with people directly and say, hey, we, we've got these projects in hand. In the future, we may have forward contracts as well for like buying carbon. But um, businesses and enterprises have the option of literally hand picking which projects they want. And then through that, the widget does the right way, widget does the rest, really. <laughs> yeah, and I think that's an evolution of this industry, right? As much as we want people to know what is under the covers, ideally, at some point, you know, we want them to just not care and just want that functionality enough that they just go ahead and use it. Dan, you talked a little bit about, you know, a use case. Can you share a little more about the kinds of industries that you're seeing interest from? Yeah, so our first implementation of the Dovi widget was um, with a government project in Queensland. Um, one of the things they were looking to do was get some idea about um, kind of, I guess, the carbon footprint of their building, first of all, and then whether the level of solar investment they were making would cover the usage enough of their building. It turns out it wasn't, wouldn't quite cover it 100%, but they wanted the building to be carbon negative, uh, sorry, carbon neutral. So um, where Dovu comes into that is it allows us to implement their widget, but importantly, it's the information that we get off the back of it. So because Dovu has carbon credits on Hedera, like not, not many other people do right now, um, maybe not even anybody actually, um, and the ease of the integration for it, it, it allows us to, you know, at the moment it's, it's a kind of manual process. We choose how much of the um, overage do we want to offset through the Dovu widget, but you know, this can be automated in the future and it's something that we'll look at. Um, but importantly, it's what the Dovu uh, system provides us back, which is a state proof that that retirement actually happened. So a state proof for those non-technical people on there is a cryptographic proof that a transaction happened on the Hedera network. And what that allows us to do is feed that state proof into our audit level reports. And then what it gives us is, along with what the timeless solution provides, which is an end-to-end, -end, uh, you know, fully trusted pathway through how, uh, how carbon moves through a system, we can actually then take it one step further and show that the retirement actually happened on chain on Hedera, basically giving a full end to end carbon creation, carbon offset. Um, and I, I don't think anybody else is doing that at the moment. I think that's a really exciting reason for why we chose to work with Dovu because it's, it's something that really does give end to end. And it's, you know, once the auditors kind of see this kind of stuff, they're like, wow, okay, like you've, you've made my job so much easier. Um, I don't even have to think about how I have to go and, fetch all of this information because it's all there. It's all encoded in the token. I can see that you've offset it. I can see the cryptographic proof of it. I've got Dovu's credentials for it. And it's it's really, they just need to go rubber stamp and that's it. Yeah. And that's, I mean, it's, it's incredible, right? To see sort of this flywheel of each of you has, you know, your key expertise. You're each working to solve an important piece of this, um, of this really big puzzle, right? And um, I don't think anyone can do it alone. And I have continued to be impressed by the breadth and the creativity of the projects being built on Hedera that are really focused on this sustainability ecosystem. 
Um, and Matt, you know, I don't know if you can share the other kinds of folks that you are working with. You know, I know you have, um, you know, you have a lot of demand for these credits. Um, you know, how are you going about finding partners? How are you going about, you know, starting to work with them? Well, we, we, we are talking to a fair number of people. Unfortunately, I can't divulge names at this time. But um, our general strategy is to find the demand to fit the supply because we, we do have potential to hit hundreds of thousands, if not millions of tons of supply of carbon. But obviously, one of the biggest risks of supply is, you know, you can't you can bring on, you know, hundreds of thousands of tons of carbon and not have any demand on the other side because then that's the huge risk. Um, so we're, we're trying to be very strategic and, you know, to working with Timeless is, is great for, from, from the kind of integration and kind of requirements point of view. But when we, when we start working with the kind of the, the larger players and the larger volume, then at least we can go come to the supply side of our marketplace and be like, okay, this is, you know, check for a hundred grand, um, continue to work with us for 20 years, you know? <laughs> um, and then that's, that's really kind of the, the, the aim from the business side. And so if someone wanted to explore the same kind of integration that you have done with Timeless, how would they go about doing that? Yeah, I mean, like right now it's very much like a um, white glove service. I guess that's probably the, the, the best way of describing it. Um, we will basically uh, get on calls with you. Either you can reach out to us through our um, website um, and either myself or one of the other team members will kind of um, have a chat with you. Um, and also, even if you're supply, a demand partner, or even a DMRV provider, um, you, there'll be different routes for you to contact and provide some uh, kind of information so that you can either strengthen the credits that we have, or you can be the demand side for the supply partners. I think just one thing as well is for Dovu, you know, I, I know not everybody's going to be building on Hedera. Or, or maybe people, are like, people aren't even using blockchain stuff at all, like, so if it doesn't require you to be on Hedera, by the way, so if you want a widget for your website to help people offset all of their stuff, then you know that doesn't have to be a blockchain solution or a blockchain-based website. That 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 really was, and thank you, Dan, for saying that. It just slipped my mind. But that 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 really is what we were trying to do with it. Is that how do you almost have a Web two experience where the entire backend is Web three, where the credits that are being you know moved and retired um, have the entire backend of like a DLT without anyone having any knowledge, you know? And that's kind of interesting. <laughs> yeah, I think that abstraction of that layer is a sign of a maturity in the market, right? Um, at the end of the day, I don't care. You know, I'm not looking at all the internet protocols before I go online to a site, right? Maybe in some cases I should be looking more closely for security reasons, but um, in general, you just expect it to work. And I think that's one of the really interesting things about what you guys are doing together is that, you know, your Timeless customers can come to you and they can not know anything about DLT or Hedera, but they're getting the service and they're getting the value that they need. Um, and so, Dan, as you think about, you know, 2023, what is ahead for you guys? Um, we want to keep building out pilots. I think, um, I mean, in Australia here, everything's so slow moving. It's, it's such a shame, but we're, we're getting really good traction in the U.S. Um, and the Middle East as well. So... I think that's probably where we'll be focusing at the moment because every time we speak to someone here in Australia, they're they're quite a while, while away from doing things. But we've got some really good pilots happening. Um, I think we want to increase the number of pilots across a number of different verticals just to kind of prove out our solution and prove that we can uh, do the things that we want to do. Um, but I think we're, I think our platform's at a point now where it's mature enough that you know we're, we're good to go for commercial solutions. So I think we're trying to get those projects in that are that you know, really make an impact, really kind of change things. So things that have always been considered as, um, you know, too complex or too carbon intensive is probably where the world's going to first be focusing on. So, you know, the fact that we've got this green pig iron thing and iron is considered one of the most, you know, polluting ways of doing things like how can we make that better or how can we at least identify parts within the system that, can be improved upon. So what one of our clients is doing with the, for example, the gas recirculation is is huge because the process creates gases that can power the rest of the processes. And, and by them having empirical evidence that they can say that 
I am by by recirculating this gas, I'm saying saving 60% of emissions going into the atmosphere. That becomes really powerful for them and for their investors because the investors want to, you know, it's now a risk to invest in non-green projects or not non-green solutions. So how do you know that that how do you know that that solution is green? And the only way you can do that is by measuring it. So that's why I think the MRV is going to be so important going forwards. Um, but you know, you're never going to be able to have 100%. 100% insetting. You're never going to be able to offset 100% of your things through your processes. So having offsets externally to this that you can claim is going to be the way that we get to net zero. And I think, um, you know, the more people, the more participants we have within the Hedera ecosystem, the more options that we have that the best fit for, for what our clients need. So I, I think really just showing all of that stuff out, I think we can... Um, we can really focus on helping people get to net zero. Fantastic. And Matt, um, before we wrap up, what is ahead in 2023 for you all? Dovu has, you know, up until recently been very focused in just the uh, regenerative agriculture side of things. We're switching direction because we want to focus not only on um, farmlands and, you know, all these, all these different kind of uh, agricultural causes but we, we, we want to focus a lot we, 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 we want our solution to be um, focused on all forms of carbon supply all, all nascent forms from, from like you know things like climb works where they pull carbon from the atmosphere and inject it underground to like kelp farms you know in the sea um, and so our goal this year is to create a system where um carbon can be onboarded to a DLT such as you know like to Hedera let's say in a fraction of the time and people can get connected to the right people the right DM DMRV providers and the right verifiers currently one of the biggest problems with the industry and carbon credits is that like a, like a project uh working with the registry you know it can take you know, 12, 18 months before credits can, you know, be up for sale. Sometimes um, so, uh, project owners need to pay, you know, tens of thousands of dollars. And this is something that we find unacceptable. And although we're learning all, all the way, our kind of moonshot, our kind of aim is to basically get someone to onboard carbon in minutes or hours and get connected to the right people with minimal cost so that you could literally have a farmer in you know southeast asia that could unlock the carbon underneath their feet in the soil or you could have a you, you could have any number of projects and can combine that with our marketplace and additional visualize, visualizations so that it makes it easier to, to digest what is in front of people uh, I, I think it would be extremely powerful and to kind of pass that on and that choice to you know businesses like timeless that really is the aim of the game this year. Wonderful. Well, thank you both for joining us. I love hearing your story and sharing it with the community. I think it is a great example of um, the kinds of collaborations that we are seeing more of among Hedera projects and community members. And so it is just wonderful to see and to be able to share with others. Um, thank you both so much. Thanks, Anabia. Thank so Thanks, much. Matt. <laughs>